Morning everyone, welcome back to the channel and I'm in a Mercedes EQA this week. Um, test drive, impressions, review, keep it here. So I've um, kindly been uh, lent uh, a Mercedes EQA um, for a short while on the test drive. Um, big shout out to Mercedes of Stevenage uh, for the, the brief loan. Um, it's all part of this, looking for the next car. Again, still very undecided. Um, a couple of things haven't worked out. I'll explain probably on the next video um, around that, but until then, Let's check out the EQA. So inside, really nice, kind of what you expect from, from a Mercedes and from a, a car of this value. Um, this particular model is one of the base models. Um, my, my first impressions, really nice cabin, fantastic quality as you'd expect. Everything feels of premium quality. Um, it's, uh, it reminds me of uh, the screens and everything that they've, they've recently put in in the new EQCs. Really long one flat screen across that goes across the, um, uh, the driver kind of console as well as the, the, the part next to it in the center console. Um, array of buttons underneath for your essentials, um, stalks and things like that um, for the essential stuff like windscreen wipers and, and heating and all that sort of good stuff. There's a touch pad in the center console uh, to do some of the control or or you can do some of the control on the screens obviously the um, the screen is touch screen as well uh, that shows you various things like phone uh, navigation all very responsive very clear um, can't fault this whatsoever it's got pretty much everything you need um, there's just all, all the sort of stuff that you want is there and it's as at an easy, um, clear, readable um, thing, which I found over the last three or four cars I've, I've driven, one of the key things that is essential when you're driving something like this, or when you're driving any car really, is that your concentration needs to be on the road and not fiddling around with stuff. And the biggest problem I had with the Tesla Model 3 really was and I didn't really think this, it was going to be, everything's on the screen, that's brilliant, but actually everything on the screen to me isn't that a great a great thing. Um, and it was a little bit complicated, uh, just just a minor niggle thing, but I, I think that's a, a valid point. Um, this, however, you know, everything about it is nice, clear, easy, everything's where it should be. Um, you can easily get to like the charging stuff, you can configure the screens in front as well um, to show you what you've got. Um, this particular, or the, this range of cars, um, has a WLTP of approximately 260 miles. Realistically, um, it should be around the 220. My big concern, however, is the car is currently sat at half, and we're at 73 miles left. 150, 160. Now, I'm guessing this isn't built an EV from the ground up and that it's got legacy um, infrastructure underneath it and therefore is probably heavier than what a ground up EV may be. I'm only guessing, so comments below if you know. Um, but 73 miles at half isn't great. Bear in mind it is zero degrees at the moment outside. Hence the reason there's a lot of filming in the car. Um, but I'd expect that to be a lot better now, what is um, is evident though, I've just taken this round some normal roads and down some motorways. That didn't really fluctuate that much as well. So actually, 
it could be a bit higher than that, but I don't think you're going to see much more than 200 at the absolute maximum, which is, you know, it's still a reasonable amount, but for the price of the car, um, I'd expect a little bit over that. But that that would be a, you know, you'd have to do a long-term sort of test on that to see if that's, that's evident or not. Um, everything feels nice. I, I think my one caveat is... Um, the the seats the seats are really nice once you get the lumbar and stuff in the right place which is great but under the legs um now whether that's just me because i'm sure um i don't find it very comfortable um everything else about the seats however really nice really comfortable really good quality um materials used everything around like the door panels stuff like that really nice there's a a, a reasonable good size uh, amount of room in the car as well so let's take a look um, in the back seat, see how much room we've got there, and let's see how much boot space we've got. So reasonable amount of space in the boot, uh, sorry, reasonable amount of space in the back seats. Um, more than enough for two full-size passengers and obviously a uh, a child in there as well um, probably a two-seater rather than a three even though you've got this bit you obviously got this that will pull down normal ISO fixes um, you looks like you've got a, a USB-C at the bottom with vents at the back same materials used all the way throughout so it's nice let's have a look at the boot um, unfortunately not it is an automatic one so that's good not a huge amount of space in the boot so uh, let's have a look underneath I don't think there was much room here either yeah so just enough for a few kind of cables and bits and pieces so nothing much there um, obviously that that will fold down seats will fold down in full as well so it'll give you some more space um, but not a huge boot for the size of the car and then tailgate button so good to take a look around the car it's SUV shape really nice I love the front I like the front of the car not a big fan of the sides it just looks like any other SUV unfortunately Wheels are okay, but not anything fancy. And yeah, the back, again, not bad. Um, I just think the sides let it down. It is typical SUV. Um, decent size, a big, a big-ish car to be fair. I just thought the boot would be a lot bigger than what it is. And it's freezing outside. Lights are pretty nice. But generally, quite a nice car. I wouldn't say it's anything that blows me away though. So, um, overall impressions, really nice. Um, love the interior, the interior of the car is fantastic. Um, I just don't think, again, I don't think it, it quite matches everything I need. I generally don't think I'm going to get 200 miles out of this, especially if I'm doing motorway driving, which I do um, more probably than anything else. Um, I'd really like in, in the interior, the comfort, the the nice bells and whistles that you'd expect from a Mercedes, the screen, like a, screens and everything else is exactly what I would like. And all the materials, however, I think the boot space is lacking for the size of the car. I think, like, like I said, the efficiency I don't think is particularly great. Um, for the money you're paying, I'd expect a bit more. Um, and it seems like it's gone on the quality of the inside rather than the outside and some of the other bits and pieces. And it seems to be built on legacy, which is a shame. Um, overall, I think though, however, if you're a Mercedes driver already and you're going electric, your likelihood go from what you've got now to something like this, whether it's this or an EQC. Um, EQC, I think at the premium sort of end is ridiculous money, but Obviously, you've got ridiculous quality and um, luxury. 
And whatever I get next, I've now decided the next car from the i3 is going to be luxury. It's going to be a luxury car and it's going to have to be perfect because unfortunately at the moment the BMW i3 is still a tough one for me to beat. Um, so yeah, uh, clo closing thoughts, great car. Um, I really love it, but there's quite a few lacking parts around it that unfortunately haven't really clicked and made me want to go, yes, this is definitely the car for me. So um, again, big shout out to Mercedes on Steven. It's much appreciated. I'll put the link in the description below and the name of the guy, Paul Lewis, um, who uh, helped me out this morning. Um, so if you have got any inquiries about this car or any other Mercedes, please go and see them. Um, but yeah, um, onwards and upwards for whatever comes next. Keep it to the channel for more reviews and PEV stuff. And until next time, I will see you very soon. Thanks very much, everyone. Bye-bye.